So the time has eventually come for us to have a look at a proper neural network. Now it's going to be a very basic neural network, but we are eventually there. I'm still going to use a document here that I've uploaded to our pubs. I'll leave the link down below. You can also download this R Studio file right from GitHub. Now remember, if this is the first time you come across these videos, please start at the beginning. Otherwise, things are not going to make much sense. And also remember that I'm really after people who are interested in deep learning, who are not necessarily computer scientists or mathematicians, but really want to get involved with deep learning. In my specific case, really getting healthcare professionals involved in deep, deep learning. We won't go into the code. That will come with time. So let's just get going. I'm going to build on everything that has gone before. And we're really going to construct this network and it's going to look very familiar if you remember what we discussed when we looked at linear regression and logistic regression. The whole idea about a, behind a deep neural network is just this very loosely based on this idea of a brain cell, a neuron. And we can see one depicted here. We can see that this uh, image comes from Wiki Commons and uh, uh, Wikimedia Commons. And you can just uh, click on the link there and it'll take you to these wonderful images. The whole idea is that there are many connections. So this brain cell with its nucleus here and cell body has all these connections that uh, bring impulses from many other brain cells in and it gets trans, that impulse goes all the way along and it gets transmitted here along the axon and then to all these connections to other neurons in the network. So many connections to many other connections and that is what it is all about. Here we go, and I'm just going to make the screen size here a bit smaller so everything can fit on. Let's go, there we go, now everything fits on. Now you'll still see the input layer on this side. You'll still recognize this hidden layer here. Uh, you might still notice this node here. Uh, but things look a bit different, and the most noticeable difference from what has come before are these many connections. No longer is this one input connected to one other node in a single layer as we did with the logistic regression. Look at this. Number one, there's three feature variables here, but there are four nodes here. Now that's completely arbitrary. If you design a neural network, you decide how many nodes go here. And that number is something we refer to as a hyperparameter. There are many hyperparameters in the design of a neural network. And if you design that neural network, all those hyperparameter values are up to you. There are four nodes here in the hidden layer. In other words, that's a hyperparameter. That's your decision. And different values will work differently under different circumstances. But look at this first one. It receives input from all three of the input nodes, not just a single one. And it also gets input from this node up here, which is called a bias node. So I can create a bias value and that can also be added in to these nodes. Now here we have three feature variables. So for the first patient, for instance, or whatever the case might be in the subject, the first row or one of the rows in your data set, the value for the first variable, the variable for the second variable, the, variable, uh, the value for the third variable. Each of these are going to be multiplied by some weight. And remember now we're going to move away from calling those beta sub 1, beta sub 2, the parameters. We call them weights now. But each line here represents a value, a weight. So this x sub 1 value is going to be multiplied by this weight and then input it to that node. This node number 2, this feature variable number 2 is going to be multiplied, that value is going to be multiplied by some weight value, this line here and an, as an input and the same here and each one of them will be connected to each of these nodes so if there are three on this side each with four connections that means there was already there already be 12 values here 12 weights that we need to optimize before when we only had the single beta sub zero and beta sub one for a single variable uh, you know, that was all that we needed to learn just from this tiny little connection there's already 12 parameters that need to be learned, 12 weight values that we have to optimize for in our loss function and in our cost function. And then we can even add this bias node 
to all of these values as well. So these multiplications and they all get added, you can also add this value in there. What you are going to get is a value after all these multiplications and additions is this value called Z1. And then not only that, that's not where we stop. We're also going to apply some function to it. In logistic regression, we looked at the logistic sigmoid function, but there are many other functions and they are called activation functions and hence this idea of a neuron you can see now all the dendrites all the connections coming in all the connections going out and there's some decision as to you know what flows through here does an impulse go or does an impulse not go that's our activation function now let's represent things slightly more mathematically there is a short video just on linear algebra. Remember, I do have a course of uh, almost 100 videos on linear algebra. I link to that as well. But in case you know you've missed all of that, uh, this might not make sen much sense to you. Watch that single video. Uh, it's not that difficult though. If we have a look at it, there is my three input values from my three feature variables, and I'm going to call this a column vector with three rows and a single column, so it's three by one. And I put this little underscore here, this line under, that represents a vector, a rank one tensor. And the solution I want is this Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z1, Z sub two, Z sub three, Z sub four, depending on where you live. And so my output here is a four by one column vector. One, two, three, four rows times one column. My weight, is now my weights is now not just beta sub zero, beta sub one, or maybe beta sub two. It's a whole matrix, a rank two tensor of values. And if you look at this W sub one one, W sub one two, if we look at node one, it has one, two, three, four values coming out of it. And there we have one, two, uh, let's just look at the first row there. One, two, three, four values coming out of it. Now, if we do this tensor, uh, multiplication we have a matrix on the side and a vector on the side so we have to actually transpose it at the moment it is one two three it's a three by four i cannot have an inner product a dot product of a three times four matrix with a three times one vector i've got to transpose that so that rows become columns and columns become rows so that change from a, changes it from a three by four to a four by three now these inner two values are both three I can do this in a product and the result will be these two values on the outside, a four by one matrix exactly, or column vector at least, exactly what I wanted, four by one, four by one. There we see it. And I can, if I wanted to, even add this bias node and it'll also be, also have to be, if I add that, it also has to be a four by one column vector. And if you look at up here, of course, one, two, three, four, it's got to have these four connections. So four by one, and that leaves me with a four by one column vector. Now I need to apply to each of these values Z1 to Z, through Z4, I've got to apply an activation function. Here we call it G. Now there are many, you've seen the logistic sigmoid function. One of the most common activation functions though is, is the ReLU function, rectified linear unit. You see it's written R and then lowercase e and then uppercase LU. And this is what it looks like. No matter what value I input, if that value is zero or less, it just outputs a zero. So whatever this value, this value that I calculate here, all these z's that I calculate through this whole equation five, if that was a negative one, the activation function spits out zero. If z2 was negative one million, it's never gonna be that, but just imagine, it's going to output a zero. So it'll already be zero, zero. If it's more than zero, it just takes on that exact value. This line goes up at 45 degrees. So you can see an input of 0.62 is an output of 0.62. An uh, input of 1.26 is an output of 1.26. This is called a rectified linear unit. And what we do is, we, each of these values, Z1, Z2, Z3, we pass through this. Very easy, the output then is this. And then right at the end, you know, we'll combine this in some way so that there's an output and that output can just be as is in a regression problem. It can go through an activation function uh, itself if we have a binary classification, which is all we can do if there's a single node. But you'll see later there can even be more than one node here as an output. 
and then we'll use a different kind of activation for these last values, something like a soft max uh, function, and we'll get into that a little later. And that's it. There is a single hidden layer neural network, and you can see the differences from this uh, to uh, from uh, this to a logistic regression uh, network that we built before. Many more connections, and now you can see that there's richness built into this because imagine I had more nodes more feature variables, more nodes, and then more of these layers. We'll get so many of these parameters, and they all are going to, in the end, remember, we're going to get a value here, a y hat value, which is quite different from, might be quite different from the actual y, the ground truth y, and we're going to see, you know, sum up in some way, or average in some way, all these errors. That gives us a big cost function, which is now a function here already, and let's see just here, there's 12 and 4. There's already 16 connections here. And, uh, you know, there's even more here, depending on what happens with deeper layers. You can see how many parameters, unknowns, there are in this massive equation. And we're now really talking about multidimensional space. And we have to use backpropagation, gradient descent, and then we'll optimize all of these values. And we'll go through again. Hopefully our cost function will show that the error is now less. We do gradient descent through differentiation, partial differentiation of all of these, how many ever they are, weights they are. We now get better values and we go forward again and backwards and forwards until our error is as small as possible and these values all take on an optimum value. Uh, as I said, uh, there's really a richness built into this. You can, this this algorithm can learn a lot more than a simple logistic regression model. It can really try and mimic at least a simple connection inside of your brain in some way. I look forward to speaking to you again.